Jay Nantra was uh, former Detective Chief Superintendent with Greater Manchester Police. I joined the police force in October 1980. I went into the CID as a detective inspector in 1998 and I investigated uh, major crime from that point and then got promoted on to DCI Detective Superintendent and finally to the first ever female Detective Chief Superintendent in charge of my own department, the Force Intelligence Branch. I got a radio message, 6558, can you go and tell Mrs. Suchbody that her son's been killed? I was absolutely horrified. I thought, well, how am I going to do this? As I was actually walking to this address, my heart was beating faster, but my feet were walking slower because I just didn't want to get there. You've got to find the individual who's done it. You've got to find the evidence. You've got to convince those 12 good men and women of the jury, that that person has carried out that murder beyond reasonable doubt. Former Detective Chief Superintendent Jane Antrobus spent 30 years investigating serious crime for Greater Manchester Police. She begins any case review by focusing on the known facts of the crime. In the initial stages of an investigation, a senior investigating officer will put together what they call a timeline. Where's that victim been? How many witnesses have they been passed? What forensic has been gathered? So the timeline is a visual aid to understanding the crime. They're making music to watch girls by. I'd like to thank you all for turning out early this morning and assisting us on Operation Beluga, where we're doing a series of warrants and house searches. Anna's future as a detective depends on CID boss Jane's verdict. I think she did smashing. I thought it was all very good. You know, it went well. Um, we might not have got results at every address, but the, the point of the day was that we're going out, we're showing a police presence, we're doing positive policing, reassuring the communities, and we're clearing up some uh, crimes that are outstanding. And as well as that, it's a learning and development thing for Anna, and I think she's done great today. They were in a very close area to each other. It was all about who was the Mr Big and who had enough runners to cover that territory and then to keep other people out. Guns were synonymous with drug dealing and uh, these gang masters. Hit and run is a very serious offence indeed. If it can be proved that the collision is deliberate, the charge becomes attempted murder. We've heard the 999 call by 52-year-old Keith Whiteside. He said somebody tried to run him over. Yeah, he escaped unscathed, but claims the car was deliberately driven straight at him and was lucky it didn't hit him. Mr Whiteside's at the station and we're going to interview him now. Hi, Lisa. Right. Got some information for you. Mm -hmm. Our inquiries check out. And that means that you are who you say you are. So I can go? Well, not exactly. It means you're not a suspect anymore and I'm going to de-arrest you. Right. But I need your help because we've still got to find this girl, track her down. Yeah, yeah. OK, fine. OK. <sighs> Finally, thank you. I know it's a relief for you. Mm. So I'll sort you out a cup of tea and okay. then we'll get on from there. Thank you. Cases involving identity fraud are frequently difficult to solve. However, there's often a lot of relevant information that the victim can give us to help. If it's not Michael Stone, then who is it? And where's that individual been for the last 20 years?